I don't know what to say or how to feel about this thing. Because honestly, I really wasn't going to do a review. But since we're coming close to the last Raw of 2016, I just decided just to go ahead and just get it over with. And actually do a Raw review. I actually did a predictions video for Roblox as well as with my thoughts towards TLC on the same video. And I'm going to probably put it up maybe sometime tomorrow. Or if not, probably sometime this week. But uh, let's be real here about this Raw. The only time that I ever had the feels, and that means extremely excited, definitely was hearing the fact that Sami Zayn might be going to SmackDown. That made me more excited than I ever thought I was going to be excited about this Raw. Because Sami Zayn should have been on SmackDown from the get-go. But instead, we end up getting swerved when he said that he was going to trade him for Eve Marie. Now, I love Misa Eva Marie. All red everything. Now, she's, I know her hair is black again. She's a brunette, so all black everything. I don't know what to call it now. I guess all black everything. And it would be great to actually see Eve Marie being on Raw. But then, with the caliber of women that's on Raw, comparing to Eve Marie, who we really haven't seen wrestled, wrestling on television. Now... When it comes to, like, I don't know, main events or when it comes to, uh, I, I know they're not around anymore. But I actually did see her um, um, wrestle on Superstars and she actually has gotten better. But we really have not seen her perform on the main roster since her debut. But, but I digress. I would be excited to see Eve Marie on my screen, period, because I am a fan of hers. But it was a, it was literally a jab towards this whole thing. Like, I, I'm sorry. And actually, somebody pointed it out on Twitter. Several people pointed it out on Twitter. That Mick Foley is always gushing about the women's division. Always gushing about the women's revolution. Always trying to promote the female stars. But he literally kind of slapped... E. Marie in the face, pretty much downgrading her, saying that she's subpar... Compared to Sami Zayn. Now, yes, Sami Zayn, of, of course, is a higher, is a better performer than Eve Marie. Eve Marie is somewhat of a novice, but she's getting better. I understand that. But that was a huge jab. I'm sorry. That was jabbing in very poor taste for Mick Foley. It, it just was. Especially somebody that is a huge advocate for the women's division. That was in very poor taste. It just was. And I know a lot of people don't like Eve Marie. They never did. They have their own choices and own opinions about her. But on the real, it was in very poor taste for him to actually do that. It, it just was. But I digress. I got literally heartbroken and slapped in the face knowing that Sammy ain't going nowhere. No, And I think that um, Connor OK Fabe actually did call this out on Twitter that he said that he does believe that they're going to have a match at Roadblock, but he was hoping that they were going to go to, to the Blue Brand. On the real, I was just hoping they were going to send him to the Blue Brand and not have this match at all, because I don't really care to see a match between Braun Strowman and Sami Zayn. I've seen far too much David versus Goliath style matches. I want something new and something different. The feud has not been built up enough for a David versus Goliath style match. And I know that Vince loves these. He loves these styles of matches. I know the WWE loves these. They eat them up. They eat them up in droves. But when it comes to a David versus Goliath style match, whether it's a man or a woman, you have to have a decent build and a decent storyline to have the match have some substance. To, have, to, to get, get you the feels, to get you to care about the match. It has to have, it has to have a, 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 an efficient, not efficient, but it has to have a decent build. It has to have a decent build and a decent storyline for it to work. If you don't, it's going to fall flat on its face. And that is what this storyline has done. Falling flat on its face. They don't know what to do with Braun Strowman, and they don't know what to do with Sami Zayn. They're throwing them in a random feud, thinking Dave vs. Goliath's match is going to get everybody hyped. 
and it's going to be a great match to see. You're not going to care, y'all. I, I guess speaking for me, I don't care about Braun Strowman versus Sami Zayn. I love me some Sami Zayn. Braun Strowman has some massive potential in being a monster heel, but they have not utilized them to their fullest potential. They're just throwing them in random matches and just seeing what sticks. And it just doesn't stick. It's not going to. At least in my eyes, it's not. And I'm trying not to make this a rant, but I guarantee nothing when it comes to this. And let's talk about the New Day, shall we? When it comes to that really, and I was actually going to make a video separate from this, but I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and just rant off right now. When it comes to the New Day, the New Day, yeah, they're making history. Oh, yeah, they're going to beat the record. They officially beat the record, and I'm just now... Raw just now went off. It's 11.14 p.m. on Monday night. At midnight, they're going to officially beat Demolition's record. That is the most petty piece of crap I've ever heard in my life. It is. Seriously. When it comes to beating a record, having a record being made is a legacy. Is a part of that tag team's legacy. They've already demolished it when it came to Kendrick in London. They already demolished it again when it comes to demolition. And yeah, I'm going to go on the women's side and say they did the exact same thing with the Divas Championship when Nikki Bella had it. And they pretty much have practically not, not I'm not going to say demolished it, but more like tarnished the whole legacy of AJ Lee when it comes to that record. They pretty much have tarnished it. Now, I'm not saying that the, the people that actually held the belts did not do anything for that record. They made that record noticeable and they made you care because they actually were fighting champions. When it comes to AJ Lee, when it comes to Demolition, when it comes to Kendrick and London, they actually did put their championships on a line more than once. Now, when it comes to the New Day, I can count maybe on one hand. <laughs> and I'm just doing this on one hand. I can count on one hand how many times those fools have literally defended their championship. And I know everybody's like, well, it all depends on how they're booked. I'm going to be real with you, man. I'm going to be extremely real with you. As well over as the New Day is, they probably have some sort of clout behind the scenes. They got to. They're making the money. They can probably have a little bit of say-so, and that's just my own personal opinion. But honestly... I don't call them nothing. I don't call them fighting champions. I don't call them defenders of anything. They just held the belts. They kept them warm for 400 plus days. That's all they freaking did. I honestly have not ever liked the New Day. They grew on me, but warts grow on you, and it's time for warts to be removed. And I consider the New Day to be the biggest wart of them all. Sure, they're entertaining. Sure, they come out there, dance, shuck, and jive what have you, with their unicorn phalluses on their heads and their cereal that is pretty much an overly expensive version of Lucky Charms. Sure, they come out there with all their merch and all that other stuff and they're entertaining, but it just gets old. It gets old, you get tired of it, it gets dead far, fairly quickly. And that's how I really feel about the New Day right now. They have gotten on my nerves and they're like a freaking wart that needs to be removed. It would have been great to see them lose the titles on Raw before the, the stroke of midnight. It would have been great. It really would have been great. They did that when Nikki... I, no, they didn't do that when Nikki Bella. As Nikki Bella actually did get, um, get the record. But before the record was extended, that is when Charlotte took it from her. But other than that, I'm so tired of New Day... I, I'm just sick of them. I, I'm seriously sick of them on my screen. And yeah, you, you hear me talk about shucking and jiving a lot. And I'm not going to go into the history behind it. If you guys really want to know more about it, look it up on Google. I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to go too much into it. But I am going to say this. They have done nothing for those belts. Those belts are useless with them. It's bad enough that we have the whole free bird rule, which is something I think should have retired a long time ago. But... They have done nothing for the belts. And I'm going to have an example here. I'm just going to put an example out here. When it comes to The Miz, I have more respect for The Miz now than I did back in the day. 
Because the Miz now, when he holds the championship, not only is he promoting himself, he's making that championship look good as a heel. And that's the same thing that Cody Rhodes did when he when he actually did bring back the old classic IC championship. When he was a heel, he made that belt look good. And the belt looked good on him. The same exact thing with the Miz. They, he actually not only had the belt look good, but he made the belt look good on him. The New Day has done jack squat with the titles. It's just been belt buckles to them. That's all it has been. They have done nothing for those titles. They held it for way too long. And it's all because Demolition is suing WWE. And they're trying to make an example out of them. The same exact thing they did with AJ Lee. How petty is that? It's extraordinarily petty. I'm sorry, it is. And I may have spit on the screen, but my bad. But other than that, it is extraordinarily petty. You have to be a little bit more professional than that. And you have to start thinking of your brand. Screw the people that are suing you. You got lawyers for that, high paying lawyers for that. You think of your brand and your business and you think of what those belts should be worth. That is the whole purpose of a wrestling company is the titles. The titles are your bread and butter. They're the reason why these people are performing. They're the reason why these people are putting their bodies on the line day after day after freaking day is to get those titles because those titles are supposed to have worth. They have made those belts look useless in the past months than I have ever seen in, a, in years. When it comes to the tag team division, they are literally a wart on those belts. They are. I'm sorry. And I don't know what they're trying to do, whether or not they're trying to go out of PG or back into the little bit of, of TV 14. I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't care. But I am tired of them making all these kinds of sex jokes and all these. I, I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of hearing about Biggie's. Ugh, I'm not even going to go into that. The thing about it is, and I don't even want to sound prudish. I'm just saying just this Biggie already freaks me out. But other than that. This needs to die. This whole New Day thing, this whole holding the titles thing needs to go away. And now that we are stuck with them beating the record, there's no way of changing that. They have officially beat the, well, they haven't officially beat it yet. It's 1121. But at midnight tonight, now that the, the show is over, they have officially beat the record. I don't know what their obsession with records is, but it's a disgrace. It just is. And I guess when it comes to talking about the show itself, there really isn't much to talk about. But I will say this. They have literally swerved us twice. Well, when it comes to the tag team, the tag team titles being possibly being um, uh, having someone take it from the New Day, I kind of knew that that wasn't going to happen. Because let's, let's put it this way. For anybody that has been in school, you know there's always a test that has at least three questions. That has four questions. Three questions you know are obviously wrong. And then there's a right answer beneath it. You know it's either D or A. <laughs> a is either the correct answer and, and B, C, and D are always wrong. Or maybe vice versa. Or D is the right answer and, and A, B, and C are always wrong. That is what this is. It was a multiple choice question that was obvious to everybody that the New Day were going to retain their titles. That was it. It was entertaining to see Sheamus and Cesaro up there, but that was just a tease. They weren't going to do anything like that. They were going to show and teach Demolition a, le a lesson. That was their overall goal right there, was to teach Demolition a lesson to show, hey, we are over you, we are better than you, we're going to be petty, and we're going to take your uh, your uh, legacy away. We're going to, well, honestly, you can't really take anyone's legacy away, but they're going to take away their record. That's the only thing they can take away is their record, pretty much, and that's what they're going to do to try and make an example, and I think it's pathetic. Even more pathetic, Lana and Rusev. I love Lana and Rusev, and I'm always going to be behind Rusev because I am tired of them disrespecting Lana, putting her in these misogynistic story lines, whatever it is, feud, whatever the heck it is. They're putting her in these misogynistic, very sexist promos that not only has disgrace for her, but also for her husband as well. Get over it. 
They're married now. They have every right to be engaged if they want to be. They have every right to be married if they want to be. Stop making an example out of them. Stop putting Lana in these terrible, terrible, terrible positions with Enzo Amore. I love Enzo, but Enzo's looking like a complete sleaze day after day after day after freaking day. I mean, come on now. He's looking like a total sleaze day in, day out. They're trying to make us hate Rusev because he's foreign, but I'm more behind Rusev now because he's actually defending his wife. Sure, you may see behind the scenes them arguing. What the heck do we know what they're saying? They're probably talking about what they're going to eat for dinner. They're speaking in Russian. How are we supposed to know what they're saying? They could be talking about what they're going to eat after they leave the show or whether or, or, or whether or not she wants a puppy. Who knows what they're saying? They're speaking in Russian. But he's supposed to be the bad guy because he's foreign. Cold War is over. The Cold War has been over for years. Can we move on now? Why can't Rusev just be a babyface? Why can't he just be the guy that he that people can actually cheer for? Why can't you allow that to happen? Why do you keep putting Lana in these terrible positions knowing that they're trying to uplift women with this whole women's revolution and you're bringing her down pretty much to how it was back in the day during the whole bra and panties matches and oil fights and all this other stuff with them pretty much wrestling in songs day after day. You're practically downgrading her to that. And they've done everything they could to bring up the women's division and you're going to bring them down like, like you don't bring her down like it's nothing. I get pissed off every time I see that. I'm like, can you freaking grow up, please? The 80s have been gone for years. Decades have moved on. Why can't you? It's just to the point where I can't even say that this Raw was bad because I've had more emotions than I've ever had in a Raw in a very long time to the point where I haven't even fell asleep. But I can't say that this Raw was great either because I've been more angry <laughs> watching this show than anything else. The only thing that kind of made me laugh were the twerking bunnies that they had in the commercial pretty much every five seconds. I actually enjoyed that more than Raw. But can I say that this Raw is bad because this Raw actually had me have emotions? Had me have anger? Had me actually care about some things? In a way, I guess I could say, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know how to feel about this Raw. I'm more pissed off about the swerve that they had, literally saying, oh, we're going to take Sami Zayn to SmackDown, but then didn't. Then we end up seeing a New Day, which is practically a huge disgrace for those tag team belts. Ended up holding it when I kind of knew they were going to hold it anyway. And then the whole Lana Rusev thing was a complete disgrace too. Not to mention that we were supposed to see Emelina tonight, but then Emelina did not show up. So I guess they're trying to make her into the blonde version of Eve Marie. Maybe. I don't know. But I really don't blame Emma for not coming out. I don't blame her. Because the Emelina gimmick was not even needed. It's a downgrade, like I said before, it's a downgrade to what they were trying to do with the women. So why in the world are you going to have somebody like, e like, uh, like Emma come out there to be a blonde version of Eve Marie? It doesn't make any sense. This whole night doesn't make any sense. And then they're teasing the fact that Roman Reigns might be a dual champion. <sighs> Dear Lord. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't know what to say about this. I really don't. I honestly don't have a freaking clue what to say about this at all. And even with the cruiserweights, the one thing I guess I could say is a positive is the fact that they're trying to give a little bit of something to the cruiserweights. At least they have dialogue for the cruiserweights. At least they're trying to start a feud with the Cruiserweights. Even though there was something a little off about Kendrick tonight. I don't really know what was going on with him. But other than that, yeah, at least they're trying, I suppose. But I don't know who was watching 205 Live. And after seeing the first 205 Live, I understand why you don't watch it. I understand. I really do. But other than that, guys, there's really nothing much to say about this Raw. When it comes to Owens and, and Jericho, they're like an old couple that won't stop bickering. And it's just to the point where the wife just got tired of the husband and decided to walk out. That's pretty much what it is. They finally got the divorce. They're finally going through with it. 
something they should have done for months. Or it's like a couple that had nothing in common. Or a couple that had plenty in common, but they were around each other too much to where they got sick of each other and they just want to end it. Or at least one of them wants to end it, but the other one doesn't. That's pretty much how it is with those two. I kind of outgrew the whole Jericho thing. The list thing may be way over, but he doesn't even do the list thing anymore. I'm just waiting for Jericho to leave. I really am. Jericho has done his job. Jericho's got Jericho over. He's done his job. He's got the list over. He's done his job. But he hasn't done anything else for anybody else. So I'm really ready for him to go. Because Kevin Owens really doesn't need him. <laughs> but in this case, I'm done. And when it comes to this Raw, I'm practically scratching my head here. I really am. I don't know whether or not to say it was good. I don't know whether or not to say it was bad. I am confused. And it's mostly because I actually have emotions for this Raw. But it's just to the point where I don't care about a lot of stuff. I, I don't know. I have mixed, conflicted feelings towards this Raw. It's odd. It really is. I can't say it's bad because I genuinely had emotion towards some of these segments. But I genuinely can't say it's good because I got really pissed off. So I'm leaving it up to y'all. What do you guys think about this Raw? Seriously. Uh, do you guys like it? D did you like it? Did you like everything that was going on? Did you hate it? I want to know. Because I have mixed feelings <laughs> towards this. I can't even make a conclusion. But everything that I said before is practically how I felt. But whether or not this, this Raw was good or bad, I can't say. Because if it was bad then I would genuinely know it was bad. And there'll be a lot of matches I would not care about, which would make it bad. But the fact that I care a lot about the matches that I really didn't care much about, that I got angry by some of the segments, including with Lana and Rusev, the fact that I got really pissed off about the New Day, and the fact that I got really sick of Jericho and Owens, and the fact that I actually said something, well, I always say something nice about the cru Cruiserweights because I love the Cruiserweights, but the fact that they actually did give Cruiserweight's dialogue, and also the fact we did see Emelina that pissed me off, and the swerve that we had about Sam, Sami Zayn when Mick Foley came out, the fact that I actually got angry about these things, but then I honestly, I don't know. Like I said, I'm leaving it to y'all. I really am puzzled about how to feel about this thing, so I'm leaving it to you guys. And y'all let me know what you guys think about this rock. Because I can't, I, I can't, I don't have a conclusion. I'm out. Here's your girl out. Peace.